What's poppin' everybody? It's your boy Snowy Kurama, and we are back for the Galar Trade Service League, also known as the GTS. This week we are battling uh, one of my good friends, Adam, and uh, that's all I really got to say. Besides that, this is also a uh, postcom. I don't know how I'm gonna be doing. Uh, I don't know if I should be doing live comms right anymore or right now because I saw something in my last battle and I was like, God damn, if I did that, then I would have won. So I might just try, um, might just try post comms from now on, except for next week. And um, yeah, I'll just get into my own team because I didn't exactly go into my uh, my switch for this week. I wanted to have something that would allow me to get toxic spikes out of the way. And Vileplume wasn't doing it for me because I already had a decent grass type that I was bringing every week in Sceptile. So we brought on Needle Queen. It's another way to take care of rocks. Or another way to set up rocks because really all I had prior was a Seismi Toad and Sand Slashed. And Nido Queen is just something that I needed in that regard. Kind of sucks that we have three ground types on the team, but um, you know, I needed a way to get rid of Toxic Spikes, and Nido Queen sets up rocks as well, and Toxic Spikes. So, yeah, I've seen Nido Queen put in a lot of work. I've used Nido Queen and put it in a lot of work, so it's a familiar little tool that I have in my tool belt now. And let's just get into uh, what Adam's team was, or is rather, or maybe was. As of week four, this is what it was. We got Landers Therian, Hatterene, Suicune, Zygarde 10%, Rotom Heat, Ambipom, Aerodactyl with the um, the G Max or Dynamax capabilities. We got Whimsicott, Chinchino, Guzzlord, Pharaoh Seed, and the big boy right here, Mega Aggron. Looking at his team, noticed a lot of fighting weaknesses. No ghost type, but he does times four resist and Hatterene and Landorus is, I think, a resist as well. Not sure. But he's got a lot of fast Pokemon, and the slow Pokemon that he has are uh, super defensive. So this is the team that I decided to bring. I was going back and forth a lot on what I should be bringing, and I just eventually said, fuck it, this is the team. If I win, I win. If I don't, I don't. We're here We're here just chilling. We got our Scizor here, ba Choice Bandit. This thing is my Hatterene answer type thing. We have Superpower here because he's got a lot of fighting weaknesses, and it does quite a bit to Aggron. Uh, knock off here to get rid of some items, and U-turn, of course, for our uh, initiative. Keep that going. We brought a Choice Scarfed Landorus, not Landorus, Torn Therian this week. First time bringing Torn. Um, I have a Scarf set that originally was supposed to just outspeed Landorus, but now I have it outspeeding his uh, Chinchino and his Ambipom as well, with the rest in HP. This thing's special attack is not wonderful as it is. Modest would have been so much better here, but able to outspeed his things that I needed to outspeed. So we got Hidden Power Ice for his Landris, Sludge Wave for the Hatterene, as well as that might actually be it. There might be another Poison Weakness on the squad. Take another look. Take another look. Oh yeah, Whimsicott, of course. I always forget about the Whimsicott. And then we also have Focus Blast for our fighting weaknesses in Ambipom and Chinchina, as well as Guzzlord. And then U-Turn, of course, so we can keep up, keep up that momentum. So yeah, we got our Seismitoad here, and I wanted to do something different with Seismitoad, as you can see on the screen with our EVs. We got an Adamant Natured with some speed and the rest and HP. We got Liquidation, Power Whip, Drain Punch, and Toxic. Toxic is just so we can, you know, toxic some things, whittle them down. Drain Punch is here so that we can whittle away at Agron as much as we possibly can. 
Liquidation is just a nice, powerful stab move. He's got a uh, Rotom that dies to it with some hazard help and some damage prior. And then Power Whip does 60% to your standard Suicune that I could find on the damage calc. So this thing's my Suicune answer. I have enough speed in here to outspeed it with uh, no speed investment. So this thing is pretty oh uh, oh yeah and also water absorb your standard suicune could not touch me we got rindo berry because hidden power grass might exist on a mod of his we got rotom here of course because we're we're me so i'm gonna bring the freaking rotom we just got a, a standard defensive or at least my standard defensive way of building rotom with volt switch pain split blizzard and will-o-wisp so that we can get rid of so that we can uh burn that agron Agron's a big problem, because that thing doesn't need a lot of uh, defensive investment in order to just smack you up, so... Yeah, also I think it has access to Curse, which is crazy. And then over here we have our Gallade with the Citrus Berry, so we can get some HP back when we're low. We have Will-O-Wisp, Close Combat, Ice Punch, and Aerial Ace. We have Close Combat and Aerial Ace, of course, so that we can raise our attack and speed respectively ice punch is here for landris plus it does new it's a neutral hit on just about everything on his team and willow wisp is here so we can max guard against that aerodactyl as well as potentially burn yet again the agron when we're not in dynamax form also burning landris would be nice as well last but not least we got our Court changing Cinderace. This time we got U turn instead of Sucker, uh, not Sucker Punch. U turn instead of High Jump Kick. Again, have enough speed to outspeed his Fathons and the rest in HP. This thing is here basically to get rid of rocks on our side of the field. And I have found out through testing and through Googling that Court Change is not affected by Magic Bounce. So he can set up all the rocks he wants and switch in his Hatterene on the Court Change, but that shit won't matter because it's not how it works. Now let's get on to the replay. So here we are, he brought Suicune, Chinchino, Hatterene, Zygarde, 10%, Guzzlord, and Agron. I thought maybe he'd bring his Landris as that thing is kind of the best Mon in Generation 7. Not sure how it stands with all our new guys, but I mean it's still probably really good. Just in draft in general. And he doesn't have Rotom, which was surprising. I know he loves that thing a lot. No Ambipom, because that's almost a mascot of his at this point. <laughs> uh, just jokes. And I guess Hatterene is probably that new mascot and Guzzlord. Anyway, here we are with the battle. I think I led Cinderace at this point. It was either Cinderace or Scizor because I wanted to get that um, initiative off. But we'll see. I don't really remember what he led off with or what he would have but we'll just get into it they'll see then cinderace comes out and we have chinchino so chinchino we have we have our or cinderace outspeeding chinchino at least without scarf and guess what it is it's scarfed i think he kills me at this point yeah it's a dead cinderace so no court changing no pyro balling none of that so we had that valuable information that he scarfed, which means he scarfed into Pyro Ball. So, you know, our freaking Scizor will be able to take that hit. Not Pyro Ball, freaking Rock Blast. Whoopsies. Sends out the Scizor. Wait, I need to get my Pokemon straight. <laughs> Sends out the Suicune. So you turn on out of there because we can't do much with the Suicune. We got to the Seismic Toad because that is my Suicune answer. He goes out into Aggron, of course, because of things. I power whip here thinking that he's going to stay in and do some things, but honestly I should have thought about the uh, switching out more since I just said that, you know, the Suicune can't do anything to Seismitoad if it's standard Suicune. So I probably should have liquidation predicting this guy to come out seeing how it takes the least damage out of everything. Plus liquidation is stab and it will do a lot to basically everything that he's got barring the Suicune and probably Guzzlord as well. So I go out into Scizor because this thing has the superpower, and he goes out and he Mega Evolves with his Aggron, head smashes me. Didn't expect head smash, but you know, that's what it is. At this point I'm really scared. Holy shit, head smash. I U-turn on out of here to get some uh, chip. 
Go out into Seismi Toad, probably to take the head smash. Yep, we take I'll take that pretty damn well. I drain punch here to get back some recovery. Get back some of that HP. He toxics me and misses. That's rough, but that's how the game is played sometimes. Go back out into Scizor just in case he tries to toxic again, and he pulls up with the rest. So it kinda kinda looks like that my Rotom and Gallades being able to uh to burn this thing is a little a little useless because he can just rest himself up in the nice status absorber with superpower getting him down to almost half and he's still asleep i go out into my galade so that i can get on my boosts against this sleeping boy and you know dynamaxing of course getting up my speed is the most important thing as galade is slow as dick against the rest of his team he heavy slams, but, you know, heavy slam is a weight move, and Dynamax Mons are immune to it, as well as some other things. It's kind of some bullshit, but it worked out for me. I max Knuckle here so I can get his HP to go down again, as well as raising my attacks. We essentially have a Dragon Dance up, but he toxics me. He ends up landing the toxic. And then I max Airstream here again so I can get my speed up so that when I get back down to my base form, I can actually outspeed some things. He rests again so he can become healthy. And then we get back to our base form. What's really good about this turn on the close combat is that my attack stat is raised up. I can't really see it from here, which is a little unfortunate, but I think my attack stat's like upwards of 500. So we do more than half to this Agron. And he is not sleep talk as you can see from his moves. He used all four of his moves. So, you know, we are almost guaranteed to knock this thing out unless he switches. And that's a dead Aggron. That's something that I was really scared of and is out of the way. The only thing that sucks is uh, somebody using priority. Or someone being faster than me. But we ended up getting our HP back as much as we could with our Citrus Berry. Which is nice. And then we see a Hatterene come out. I don't even remember what I do here. I Ice Punch for neutral things, and we get the freeze. But then, as you saw before I could pause it, it unfroze. That's some bullshit. I think if I get the freeze, I should have him at least one turn to freeze. But it worked out for him, which is, you know, good for him. Bad for us. So, the Gallade's basically dead at this point. There's no need to switch out or nothing. We'll lose our boosts if we do that. And then we send out our Scizor on this... Thing here. He's got Giga Drain, so that's kind of sucks for our uh, Seismi Toad. And he goes out into Suicune at this point. I think I Bullet Punch because I couldn't afford to not Bullet Punch. So we at least do a little bit of damage to the Suicune. We go out into the Rotom because he's got to be faster than the Rotom, I believe. So he goes to sleep again. Too bad I didn't bring uh, Electric Terrain. I guess. He's got the Resto Chesto. He scalds us to try to burn us, probably, or just get some damage. We Volt Switch on out of there to get more damage off, and we go up to Seismi Toad. And I thought this was amazing, because, you know, he's got 60 damage right here. I calc my uh, Seismi Toad prior, and it does 60 with Power Whip, so maybe it'll kill. It should kill. There's no reason it shouldn't, unless he's defensive. And lo and behold, look at that defense. Or we just got the, uh, the bad roll. But anyway... We drain punch here to get back whatever recovery we can, and that is basically Sammy Toad's job done. All that is left to do is maybe Ice Punch, the Guzzlord, and uh, Toxic everything else, barring this Hatterene. You go out into Rotom because, you know, he's got Kicker Drain. Not good for me. I think I just Pain Split here trying to lower his, uh, lower his HP. Didn't really know how much it would do. He mystical fires me, which I figured he'd have since I got a scissor. Now I think I just proceed to uh, whittle him down a bit more so that my scissor can come in or something else can come in and just uh, hit him up. Yep, we go out to Torn here because I didn't want to take another uh, mystical fire. But what sucks is that, you know, our already not great special attack stat is now lowered. So look what happens here. Dazzling gleams me, which is fine. It's whatever. We live. Slave. It misses out on the KO by 2%.
two percent just like my milk ladies and gentlemen oh my goodness I mean that's just how the move works I thought mystical fire was like maybe it has a chance but now I, I looked into it later and now it's just guaranteed special attack drop which is nuts go back out into Rotom if you mystical fire me it's fine don't need the Rotom really anymore I needed my Torn's HP to be up more as the um, as a priority, but speaking of priority, Bullet Punch takes care of the Hatterene. Now it's 3v3, but big issue is two of his three are at full, and my guys are very worn out, so it's not looking good for your boy here. Go out into the Seismic Toad, because I didn't know what the fuck else- oh, I, I knew what was going to happen, actually. This is something that I knew was going to happen. I- I, um, so his Guzzlord, right, I know it gets Fire Blast, and I know it would knock me out, because its special attack is crazy, and I didn't want to take that, but I knew, I knew that he wouldn't go for it, because, you know, I'm obviously going to switch, and I calc it at that point, and Draco Meteor does the most to everything that I have. But, I didn't think that I could uh, afford to risk the off chance that he goes for Fire Blast. So, I felt like I had to go Seismito to take a Fire Blast, even though I knew that he was going to Draco me. <laughs> it's really unfortunate that that shit's how it goes. I should really uh, go from, uh, think with my gut for that, because that's just also the same reason, more or less, I lost last week. But, at least I'm... I'll, I'll get into that later. We go out into Scizor. We superpower this thing so that we can knock it out. And unfortunately, you know, with superpower, our attack and defense stats drop, so we're not going to do as much. But then we see the Zygarde come out. I just get to sack off the Scizor. Because it's whatever. And then we see our Torn come out here. We hidden power ice because we're scarfed and it'll knock out this thing. But really, I really wish that uh, Focus Blast had a chance to ho oko this here Zydog because if it did, then we could just scarf Focus Blast this thing here and hopefully beat him. But oh, it didn't oko. Did he have uh, did he have HP or something? No, it doesn't oko. I don't think. I don't know. I thought it did, I guess. Anyway, that's the match. Um, as I was saying earlier, I'm at least being able to re-figure out and re-predict um, my opponents. It's something that I've had a bit of an uh, issue with since I was not playing a lot. I played a bunch in Gen 6, and then 7 kind of fell off, except for Draft. And then, I haven't gotten the chance to play a lot of 8. This is the first Generation 8 tournament I've been in. And then I, there are a couple of videos of me playing Generation 8, of course, on the channel. But, I think I did fine. There's some things that I definitely could have done differently. Maybe even bringing a completely different team. I did think about bringing something that would have uh, just fucked on his Hatterene. As far as the Trick Room goes. But, I didn't want to risk him being the, the defensive set. So yeah, that's that's the game, and now, since this video is super duper late, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys what I switched out. So because we are losing it yet again, I can switch out one of my any mod on my team for something of a higher tier. And I did talk about the fact that we had a lot of ground types. And Sand Slash has done nothing, so this thing had to go. My options that I was presenting myself with as far as good spinners, was Kom uh, I've narrowed it down to three. Komala, Colossal, and Hitmontop. Hitmontop uh, is the only one of them that resists rock, because rock type is stupid and doesn't resist itself. And um, I noticed I had a lot of water weaknesses, and if I were to add Colossal, that would be even more water weaknesses, even though being able to burn things is nice. It has high defense stat with body press. I could get on, get in on that action as well. But I, I couldn't risk the water weakness, so Colossal was out. So it was either Hitmontop or Kamala. Kamala has Wish support, which is something that I wasn't aware of prior. It also has access to a bunch of nice 
coverage moves since it's a normal type. And Hitmon Top is another fighting type on the squad, weak to fairy. We have Obstagoon that's already weak to fairy, as well as Glade and Sceptile. I also didn't think we needed another psychic weakness as we don't have we have one resist, but you know, focus that focus blast is uh, something that exists. So I went ahead and picked up young Komala in the tier four slot. Let's go ahead and move him up where he belongs. Got some nice stats. We have Kamato, so it's another uh, status status um. Don't care about status, just like uh, Obstagoon when it's burned. That's what I'm trying to say. So, yeah, lots of different options I have with this. I know there's a choice band set. I know there's uh, a bunch of other things I could do. Like I said, this thing, Wish Supports, it has Rapid Spin. So, it has some priority in it, too. I think Kamala, Kamala I think, is a kind of a sleeper mon. <laughs> Literally sleeper mon. So, hopefully we'll do some good work with this. Our next match is against... Vampira, the coach of the uh, Sweet Butt Psydux, a team that you would also would know from the PDL. And uh, I think that match is going to be fun. be really easy to coordinate since we kind of live in the same apartment right now. So, yeah. That's all I really got to say. Hopefully we can bring some stuff back, win a couple of matches. We're just in it for the fun at this point. Always have been, but uh, yeah, I don't think there's any chance of us getting into the playoffs since there's only seven weeks of the season. That's neither here nor there. Learning experiences all around. Hopefully we can get better at this game. And hopefully you all will be around for the ride. So like this video if you haven't already. Subscribe if you want some more content. Of course the Snakewood LP at this point is off the ground. And we have some more um, GTS of course. Another video coming your way sometime this week. Or at least it will be recorded then. And with all that being said and more, this has been your boy, Snowy Kurama. See you in the next video. Goodbye.